The concept of me pitching my own racing game is something which I have discussed before on the channel, but I actually wanted to revisit this because I formed a bit more of a, a concrete idea of, I think, not only why I want to do this, but certain specific vibes that I would want the game to have. If I recall correctly, because I haven't gone back to check, I'm pretty sure I talked in the other video about certain vehicles that I'd want to include. I, I seem to recall talking about like sponsorships of uh, vehicles and how that would work. I'm not really getting into that side of things for the sake of not repeating myself, but there are a couple of not really eureka moments that I've had, but certainly theories that I've developed more recently as to why I don't find myself enjoying games now as much as the ones from the 2000s. And it's not just a case of nostalgia. That's just an easy blanket answer for people to give who haven't really thought any more about it. Because if it was just nostalgia, then you would go back to it for about five minutes and then not enjoy it that much after that. And in some cases you might, but in most cases you start to notice the things that weren't so great that you didn't notice at the time. But that simply isn't the case. I'm currently playing through Forza Motorsport 4 again on the Xbox 360, and I'm loving it far more than Gran Turismo 7. So it's not just the nostalgia. In fact, to really prove that it's not the nostalgia, I never completed all of the career modes back when Forza 4 came out. That's part of the reason why I'm doing it now, to get that achievement. So it can't be nostalgia if it was something that I didn't even do the first time around. Yes, nostalgia does have a part in keeping it in your mind, but it takes a truly good game to be something that you can go back to, past the nostalgia, and still enjoy. Those are the games which I would want to have in terms of developing my own. I would want to have a game that feels like the mid to late 2000s again. The Test Drive Unlimiteds, the Project Gothams, the Midnight Clubs. Not so much the Need for Speeds even then, but I guess you could say like a Need for Speed Underground 2 for some people, or a Carbon in my case. And even an older Forza game. Forza 2, Forza 4 are great inspirations to me. Gran Turismo 4 and 5 in particular are my biggest inspirations. And I would want to make a game like that. The reason why I think a game like that could work is quite simply because nobody's doing it anymore. And this is where my theory comes in. So we already know certain things, and I'm aware that there are games like The Crew which do attempt to have that kind of vibe, and that's great, but of course there's always room for more on the market. For me, the graphics, I really wouldn't care about. I would honestly want to make a game that looks like Forza 4, or that looks like Gran Turismo 5. I don't care. The game would be about fun first, and the graphics and everything second. Consider it almost like a remaster of an older game or a report to a modern console. The biggest thing that I would be interested in is using the much larger capacity of a newer console, the much larger memory, the greater processing power, the greater graphics, and everything like that, to make the game that has deliberately retro graphics perform better. So less choppy, no screen tearing, no frame rate drops, and virtually no loading times if possible. It would also allow the game itself to be even bigger. You could have even more textures, even further distance rendering. Just improving the things which back then couldn't really be done because of the processing power of the console, rather than just trying to make you know every single reflection look like you could shave using it, like a mirror. That is not as important to me. Because if you go back and play games like Forza 4, Gran Turismo 5, yes, they look dated, but they're dated in a charming way. It's kind of like how, you know, I'll go to a car meet in my Lincoln. That car is 55 years old, and it's usually one of the most affordable cars in terms of what I actually paid for it, of all the cars at the meet, say the Haynes Breakfast Club, for example, each month. And yet, it attracts so much more attention than cars that are literally 10, 20 times the price. And that's not even an exaggeration on cost because there's just a charm that certain things have, regardless of their age. That's what I'm going for. Now, where my theory comes in is that we already know that a lot of the reasons why games don't feel as fun is because of two things in particular. One, because of the constant, especially now more than ever, with Gran Turismo Sport and 7 and the forthcoming Forza Motorsport reboot, that the online, the esports, is pushed more than ever. I don't think that's a bad thing. That might be the controversial aspect, because I know some people probably think I hate that. I don't. What I do hate is preferential treatment. When you completely abandon the people who brought you to that point to only pander to this relatively new group with knowing near as many people from the existing group who transfer over into loving that new thing, and anyone who thinks that I'm wrong, as some of you have even pointed out in the comments on this point, Literally just go to the achievements of Gran Turismo 7 and look how many players have actually completed even a single sport mode event, including me. I never have, because I have no interest in doing it. So it's not just me. There are a wide swath of us who, at the best case scenario, care very little about esports and online stuff, beyond just the actual fun of a lobby. That's where online is fun. For many of us, we don't care. 
for some, they do, and it tends to be a vocal minority. So I would still want to have online stuff in the game, but I would absolutely have no interest in any kind of thing where we're meeting up in real life to create real racing drivers. Gran Turismo and Forza, mostly Gran Turismo, already have that covered. I'm not interested in competing with them. What I want is, as I said, that other thing. The thing that I want to get back to is my theory in second part is that developers are just getting older. We know that Kaz, as he gets older, his interests change, his goals for the series change, and so the game itself changes. And I think there are two things put together that make it feel different at the end of the day. One is his changing vision, which is bound to happen. The second thing is, of course, the studio behind it. And I'm sure that some things like microtransactions, paying real money for credits, DLC packs, all that kind of stuff, is mostly studio, rather than developer, director, etc. I could be wrong, but I do get the distinct impression, especially these days, that a lot of studio meddling happens in that regard, forcing those things into the game. Which of course is why an indie game, especially what would be essentially a very big indie game in the case of mine, which I know would be almost impossible to do, so if anyone wants to steal my ideas and do this, I'd be more than happy, because it's not like I'm going to ever probably do it anyway, even if I tried to crowdfund it, which I technically could, but I wouldn't know the first thing about getting a group of people together who can actually achieve this. So if somebody does want to take this as inspiration or steal any ideas, go for it. I would love to play the game. Because those developers are getting older though, and because their, their interest in the game, what they want from the game is changing, it changes the landscape of the game. And with Gran Turismo that's, I would say, more blatant than any other. And that's partially because of how long its life has been as a series, even longer than Forza. I think that we need a game that actually taps into that older kind of vibe, that 2000s era when a game actually was that first. It wasn't a career trajectory, it wasn't a jump off point, because we are literally getting to a point where games are becoming the new version of Formula One drivers starting off with karting. The future of Formula One drivers is less so than karting and more now getting started with games instead. That's not a bad thing for those guys, but games used to be games. It used to be a Test Drive Unlimited, for example, where you jump into it to get into a different world, to race and meet people online, and to literally just collect cars for the sake of enjoying driving them. The racing was always incidental. It was fun, but it wasn't the point of the game. The, the houses and the clothes and everything else, it was a vibe that the game gave, gave off. Why do people miss Drive Club so much? Why do we want it to come back? Why do we want a second game? Because it's better than Gran Turismo? Because it's better than Forza? No, because it's different. It has that same... In fact, it's one of the most recent examples from, what, 2014? Was it something like that in Drive Club's uh, case? It's a game that still managed to capture that vibe, somehow, in the post-2010 era, where it just has that certain character. The car choices are interesting. The locations are beautiful. It, it prioritizes fun over just being the most realistic thing physically possible. And where it does try to be realistic, it puts those eggs in the right baskets, not in terms of the most realistic physics, or we want the tires to deform through corners. Of course, that's all well and good, and it's a fun gimmick. But at the end of the day, what we remember from a game like Drive Club it's not how the tires deform, it's not how realistic or unrealistic the cars are, it's how incredible the rain looked, it's how amazing the cars were, it's how cool the online racing was, it's how much we as a collective community, almost as a flash in the pan, its life seems so short, genuinely loved that game. And the same thing applies to older games, and it's beyond the point of being nostalgia. If it was just nostalgia, you wouldn't have people making mods this year for Gran Turismo 2, bringing cars to the game with those PS1 graphics that were never in the game. That is happening. Games like that, which mod stuff into older titles, that shows that the love is still there, and the only reason why there isn't more of it is because many of us just don't have the skill set to achieve it. Like myself talking about this game, that's why I said, <clears throat> if somebody wants to steal it, go for it. So, what are my ideas? Well, there are three broad strokes of what I would want to kind of have as influences in the game. I've already mentioned that Forza 2 and Forza 4 would be my biggest influences in terms of the overall feel and look of the game. And then Gran Turismo 5, 4, and maybe a little bit of 2, but especially 4 and 5, in terms of the game striking a nice balance between being serious enough for each car to feel unique, but not so serious that it gets into boring territory. I think that those games put together, and definitely with some uh, Test Drive Unlimited influence in there as well, in terms of making each car feel genuinely special. This is actually another video that I'm going to be doing in future on the channel about why I believe that tuning in racing games has actually lost its way 
I think it was something that started out very good and ironically for somebody who does so much tuning, I think it's actually a pitfall that games are starting to move into. But I'm going to talk about that in a future video. For now, games like Test Drive, like Forza, like those older Gran Turismo games, they used to genuinely make every single car, even in the case of Gran Turismo duplicate cars, as we used to call them, they still somehow felt special. I mean, take me for example, even the ultra-rare automatic Evo that I owned is in Gran Turismo. If it were just, you know, any other racing game, they'd have never featured that in the first place. They'd just have an Evo 7, and that's it. If at all, they may have just skipped over the Evo 7, as so many games do. Even Forza, as far as I can remember, I don't think they've ever had an Evo 7 even in the game to begin with. Making each car feel loved cared for, special. To me, it's kind of crazy because, and I'm sure there are people who would disagree with this, but even with the incredible graphics, the phenomenal attention to detail, and the quotes of six months to make a single car in Gran Turismo 6, or in Gran Turismo Sport and 7, I should say, somehow, even with all of that time, with all of that care, even if you fully believe that, I don't feel it. Like, the cars look great, but I don't feel the love. Every car just kind of comes into the game, we talk about it for a bit, and then it just gets dumped in your garage. And there are very few occasions where the car genuinely breaks through. And it tends to be the cars that are almost memes that break through, like your Chirons and your Tomahawks and your Red Bulls. The normal stuff, the stuff which used to actually be legendary to find in like a, a little Gran Turismo 2 used dealership that would have your real-world car randomly in the game. Or cars that inspired us to make real-world purchases. Do you even know how many cars I've bought in real life because of racing games? I literally bought my first car because of Test Drive Unlimited 2, a V10 Touareg. I've bought so many cars. I told you I bought the Evo because of Gran Turismo. I would have probably never even known about that car if it weren't for Gran Turismo. And I continue to buy others because of it. Why do you think I love the Lincoln Continental so much? Because of Forza 4. It was a DLC car, I fell in love with it, and now I've had a couple of them. And I love them. Instead of just being all about winning races, we can actually be developing consumer bonds here. And this is why YouTubers work so well. YouTubers work well because they're not just a business. There's a face to it. Someone that people feel like they're a friend of. They want to follow the person's journey and enjoy their highs and you know, feel for their lows and, and all the drama that comes and everything else. That just doesn't happen with, like, Nike. You know, it's just a brand. Or Apple, it's just a brand. Some of them can spin that and make you feel that way, but most don't. It's just a blank face of a business. But, that's by the by. <laughs> the thing that I want to get into, first of all, and I've been kind of talking about this anyway, is that I want the game to be about the fun of driving not just the fun of racing. And that sounds like the most basic thing in the world, but I feel like we've moved away from the kind of game where you just log in for the sake of driving a car that you love. I've booted up Test Drive Unlimited just to drive the Be Engineering Adonis. Booting up Forza Motorsport 2 just to drive the Seat Cupra GT or the Chrysler ME412. Booting up Gran Turismo 5 or 6 to drive my Evo. Booting up Forza 4 because it's the last time the Lincoln was in the game. Stuff like this, with the very rare exception of something like the MGS VR for me in Forza Horizon 5, and even then I haven't booted it up because of that even, that's the kind of vibe I want to have. I want it to be a game that you log in because you miss your friends, and your friends are the cars. You love these pieces of art, and each one feels special. Now that actually ties in to my points on tuning, because I would actually do something which also might piss off some people, but I think it would be a good idea. And that is to kind of walk back the idea of what tuning can be done in the game. I think that we've reached a point, Forza has already reached it, and I will say, unfortunately, Gran Turismo is already hurtling towards making the same mistakes at a very rapid pace where you can just tune everything to the same level, thanks to engine swaps, drivetrain swaps, and ends up feeling, like I said before, like road trip adventure, just different bodies on the same underlying Lamborghini V12 with four-wheel drive and a twin turbo. Gran Turismo isn't quite there yet, but with the engine swaps, you can already start to feel it happening. You end up having lobbies which, even in Gran Turismo 6, would have been populated by cars like Huayras, TZ3s, Veyrons, Red Bulls, Tomahawks, these clearly defined, very individual approaches. And you could tell what kind of person was driving from their choice. Oh, they chose a Veyron. They only care about the straight line speed. They're a bit more daring. Oh, they've got the Nismo. They just want to win. Oh, they've got the Huayra. They've been playing the game for a while. Oh, they've got the Alpha TZ3. They've noticed what other people are driving, and they've decided to copy them because it's quick. These cars tell you things about the kind of people who are using it. Whereas in Gran Turismo Sport, Gran Turismo 7, doubtless the new Forza game already, I can tell you without even playing it, 
you'll see the same cars that whatever the top 10 players use over and over and over again because people don't care about the cars. There is no team loyalty, there's no brand loyalty, there's no favourite manufacturer anymore, there's no favourite car even. There's just what wins. And because people are there to win, not to enjoy, it generates a totally different kind of game. I'm not saying that my game would beat, quote unquote, these other games. I just kind of miss having the option, you know? <laughs> and if Gran Turismo and Forza were actually bothering to do this, I wouldn't even need to talk about the idea, because I miss that. I miss the concept of just having fun in a game. <laughs> and it just doesn't feel like that anymore. And I can't be the only one. In fact, I know I'm not the only one, because people older than me, younger than me, with more or less experience in different games or even the Gran Turismo series itself, have said similar sentiments. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy a Gran Turismo 7 or a Forza Motorsport. Of course you can. But I like having the choice, you know? Just because you like a certain meal doesn't mean you want to eat it every meal, every day, for the rest of your life. Having variety is, as the saying goes, the spice of life. That's the first thing. I want the game to be about the fun, the feel, making you fall in love with these machines. In effect, I want to make a game that inspires the next generation of what I was. Is that such a bad idea? I don't think so. The second thing. I actually want to prioritise creativity and inspiration over just the latest and greatest in everything. That applies to what I've already said about graphics. I don't care about having the latest graphics. Having 2000s graphics is perfectly fine by me. Those games have a, a lovely charm to them. But also, I mean, in terms of stuff like the vehicle choices. Why are all the games these days going for the same damn cars over and over again? Oh, look, we've got the new Ford GT. Oh, look, we've got the latest Audi R8. I couldn't have guessed that before I even opened the box, if you even have a box anymore to open. No, I miss the days when you'd log into a game and you would jump into the card dealers because you genuinely had no idea, even though you'd played every game before it, what the new cars were going to be. I remember being in the UK equivalent of a GameStop and there was a Gran Turismo 4 trailer playing on their TV with a VHS slot in the front of it. And I remember I would have been 10, and I remember watching that with my dad in the shop and seeing a Toyota GT1 fly past the screen in Gran Turismo 4 graphics. And compared to Gran Turismo 3, that was a big deal. Except this Toyota GT1 was dark green, and I'd never seen that before. And it had the number 8 on the side. And I said, whoa, dad, look, they've got the, the Toyota GT1 back, but it's green. And then I log into the game, and it ain't a Toyota GT1. It was my introduction to the Bentley Speed 8. It, my introduction to the Chaparral 2J, to the tank car, to so many vehicles that weren't even in the series before. And I'm sure we all have these memories. That, of course, is nostalgia. But that is part of what I want this game, or what I would like this game to be for the next generation. To be a game that doesn't just say, oh yeah, we've got the latest Lamborghini Aventador clone, which is what everyone seems to be crazy about these days. No, a game which actually has cars that aren't just the brand new thing, cars which are actually good, regardless of their age. And Gran Turismo is still trying to do that. We have the Porsche 959s, the XJ220s, so they are still trying to cling on to that, and they're trying to provide it, but somehow it still feels fake. It still feels like processed cream rather than the real thing on, you know, your split donut. It just doesn't have the same feel, the same effect. It feels almost like it's by committee, like they're just ticking a box. And that creativity is actually something which in my dream scenario I would love all aspects of the game to have. To the point where, and I've actually discussed this before, I would love to have a game where the DLC, if you even want to call it that, is actually created by the community. And I don't mean in terms of picking what cars you want, I mean actually having an official modding community, like some games like AC have, to create vehicles that you can go online and download and add to the game, maybe on a PC version, and then have some kind of way of implementing that into the console versions. And yes, it would be cross-platform, because why would you want to kick anyone out? I don't want this to be like the PlayStation versus Xbox debate. But have these huge packs, and not just cars. I'm talking about a game where you'd have circuits, but then we could add circuits, and we'd add them every month. We wouldn't have some weird, semi-vague release where you find about it a day before and skip entire months with no rhyme or reason. We'd have consistency. We'd have the kind of community chatter that, to their credit, Forza does still do. They do still try and talk to the community a lot and get that hype going, and clearly it works because I would have thought Horizon 5 was dying, but it certainly doesn't seem that way. The expansions that they're bringing out, the amount of players that are still on the game, 
and the fervor that they still seem to have for it is very impressive. That creativity I want to go even beyond the DLC cars, the, the car packs, whatever you want to call them. I envision a game where modders would enjoy the community so much and enjoy being appreciated so much with so many people enjoying their creations that we could actually reach a point where you could not just download cars or tracks, but have maybe a team of modders use assets from older games to maybe recreate something like the Driver San Francisco map as a downloadable thing into the game. Something which, of course, we wouldn't charge for because that would get into you know, rights issues, and I'm not entirely sure how you'd get around those problems, but I guess if you're creating it from scratch, technically it shouldn't be as much of an issue. But recreating memories, not just from this game, but bringing in memories and revitalizing them from completely different games. For example, you could have a modding community where you could download Oahu from Test Drive Unlimited into the game and have the entirety of the Hawaii map to just drop into an online lobby and have big servers. Probably not to begin with, but if we could afford it eventually, having big servers with plenty of players just free roaming or playing tag or whatever and downloading maps from different games that have been recreated. The map from Need for Speed Underground 2, the, the Canyon map from, you know, Carbon. Whatever game you're thinking of, there's no reason why a modder couldn't do it. You could have Detroit, San Diego, Tokyo from Midnight Club, and then later on there's no reason why you couldn't implement motorcycle patches. Make it a, again, like Tester Unlimited kind of vibe, or a Project Gotham vibe, or even a, a GTHD kind of idea with a few cars and bikes in the same quote-unquote game. That is what I would love to have. This idea of a game which is already great, already has so much to do, but then is so much bigger because of its community, except many games make that community feel like point two. You know, just a little bit down the pedestal from the main game. I would want that modding community to feel like the official part of the game. Something where, unlike Fallout for example, Fallout 4 is my personal favourite game, period, but the mods are definitely secondary, to the point where, of course, you can't even unlock achievements using mods. Well, that would be different here. You know, you could download mods because it's just maps and stuff, not like cheat codes, and it would still contribute and be implemented into the achievements of the game, such as driving distances or victories or whatever the case may be. You could use modded cars as if they were in the game from the first place. They would be given that level of respect. And I'm sure that what I'm talking about would be incredibly difficult to achieve, which is why I'm talking about it just because it will probably never happen. But hey, I can dream. <laughs> the third and final thing, at least for this video, is that I would want it, and again, this really ties into what I just said. In fact, it's directly what I just said community-driven expansion. I believe that the best way to make someone enjoy the game that they grew up with, the best way to make someone really invested for the long haul, to the point where you wouldn't even necessarily need a sequel, because the game itself just gets bigger, essentially being its own sequels within the same game, to have a community who are literally a part of the game. So, for example, you could almost make the game, if it were, for example, a Kickstarter, implement like a Patreon-style credits, where not only do you have the credits of the people who made the game, but you have the credits of everyone who backed the game on display. And you could have it so that everyone who, I don't know, buys it or donates to it, in every update, their name gets added to this ever-expanding list, making literally everyone who plays the game actually become a part of it. Even if it's just a name in the credits, that's still more than many other games would do. More than any other game has done, as far as I'm aware. A game where people are creating parts of it that they can then enjoy with other people. You could create a map and then play with other people on that map who are as excited about it as you are. And I, I'm not sure how it would work in terms of a currency system, because I would like to make it more of uh, a mutually beneficial arrangement, but I, I'm sure there is some kind of cost benefit or some kind of payment method that could be done for those creators, maybe even like a, a donation thing, where they're not necessarily paid per build, but that they're supported by the community as a whole. Because if you think about it, with the size of the community, even if you only had a, a relatively small amount of people who donated, that would still more than cover their kind of time and eff effectively make it like a full-time job for them, like a, a patron uh, would be for uh, somebody on Patreon. It's this idea of actually making a game that makes you feel like you matter again. Not just, you are a number on a spreadsheet, thanks for your money, now we're going to focus on the 10 fastest kids in the world. Like, fine, you want to do that, go for it, but don't be surprised when the other 99.9% .9 of us aren't exactly as thrilled about the game anymore. 
And after GT Sport especially, there are even more people with GT7 who are becoming disillusioned with Gran Turismo, if they haven't already. And I think the same thing could easily happen to Forza. It already has happened to me, wherein Forza Motorsport is the first Forza game ever that I don't have any plans to purchase. Because it just looks like Forza Sport, like exactly what Gran Turismo did, and I just don't care. I'm sure it will be better than that, but I have no interest in that kind of thing. If it turns out to be better, then of course, I can change my mind at any time. That's, you know, people do that. That's the overall idea that I wanted to put out there, to expand on things that I've said before, put some new ideas in there, and to me the idea of having a game that is, not to make it into too sappy of an idea, but by the players, for the players, kind of like a constitution sort of thing, I don't think that can be a bad thing. I would call the game, and I, I, I've definitely said this on uh, on Discord, but I don't know if I've ever said this on YouTube before, because I was kind of worried about somebody stealing the name, I would call the game Drive and it would be capital letters except for the I, and the I would be lowercase. The letters would be white, the I would be red, and the slogan underneath, instead of the real driving simulator, which, by the way, Gran Turismo never has been, and Forza with, uh, I don't even think they have a slogan, not as far as I can remember at least, but my slogan would be putting the U in racing, because the I is U. It's about every single person in the community feeling like they actually matter and that they can create memories with or without other players, having a huge career mode and a massive online mode, and then there's nothing to say that we couldn't implement things later on like more in-depth damage, maybe revising certain car sounds or certain physics to make it a bit better here and there, maybe even adding new parts of the game such as the motorcycle expansion, making a game that actually feels fresh because it genuinely is fresh. It's not just this manufactured idea of having a game where you just hold back stuff, which we categorically and unarguably know that Gran Turismo does, because we've seen stuff in trailers, which is not in the game at release, and then gets released later. So we are way beyond the fanboys arguing against that. It is a fact. We're so far beyond that, where you actually have a game that feels complete already, and then gets even better. That is how DLC should be done, paid or otherwise. That is the idea that I would love to do. Like I said, I don't think it will happen, and I highly doubt that anyone with the kind of money to make it happen would be interested in making it happen. But if you want to take any of the ideas that I've said today, if you are somebody who is in a position to know the kind of team you would need to put together, to have the kind of funds to do something like that, or even if you're a big studio and you just want to make a game that actually feels like why we fell in love with your product in the first place, then by all means, feel free to take the stuff that I said, because I'll be the first in line to buy it. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, tell me yours down below. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.